<laughs> um, so Ian, so Pat, YouTube is 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 over, according to a lot of people. The advertisers are pulling out. Google's running around with their hair on fire. You know, Google's like a collective person. It's like a giant. I'd rather be getting my teeth pulled right now. <laughs> you can't say you're not interested in talking about the topic before we're talking about the topic. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's a good update here. When we spoke about it originally, I always thought it was good that these issues are coming to light about advertisers being concerned about where their ads are being placed, because eventually this is going to happen. Yes. I'm surprised it took this long into ads as being on, on uh, YouTube, which is like eight years yeah. at this point. So it's here. Google's responded in a positive way, giving more control to advertisers. So that's good. Uh, they updated their ad policies, and they also updated um, their sort of, I guess, minimum views per channel in order to place ads even to begin with, to sort of, to sort of verify as well. This is, yes, this is what I like about this. And people... Um, we're all up in arms about this for absolutely no fucking... It's censorship! Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, first I'm going to touch on the, 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 um, the, the monetization thing. Because it leads right into uh, what I wanted to say and kind of what you were going to say. Um, so you cannot receive ads or be monetized now until you have a total amount of 10,000 views on your channel. Yes. So lifetime views. And that's for new channels starting, I think, you're grandfathered in. You are grandfathered in, but yes, for starting for new channels. The people who complained about this, I don't think... I mean... You're not making any goddamn money if you're if you have less than ten thousand views on 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 in your lifetime channel. 10, anyways, ten thousand views, if you want to be generous, is probably worth a maximum of twenty dollars. Probably closer to ten to fifteen. Congratulations, you got yourself two burritos so, and a six pack of shit beer. So you're you basically lost nothing if that's why you think you're uploading videos to get to ten dollars. That's you're you're hustling backwards. It's not worth your time. Right. Um. But I think the 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 more important thing here is once you reach that ten thousand, this is a very good way for YouTube to nip potential advertising problems in the bud. Because then once you hit that ten thousand, now YouTube basically gets to quick review your channel, see what your content is, and decide whether or not this is something that is going to be advertiser friendly. Yes. And I think that's a very smart move if they need to um well they they absolutely do need to keep their advertisers in mind and uh well not this just is that. this is this is an easy way to do it because there's a gate now that these people have there's to a, get through. There's a small gate and I'd argue they could even increase it and I wouldn't care. Most people they put it twenty five thousand or thirty. If you put or any effort into it you can get ten thousand views. Sure. Or, 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 within... or even if you never get there again, you haven't lost anything of literally of value. Right. But what's also important about this is think about how many channels are, are out there that don't have 10,000 views that get ads, because now anyone get ads on. Right. In the past. So everyone else's CPM is lower because the ads are being distributed over so many more channels that honestly, you know, if you have a channel out there and you're getting two views per video, advertisers don't want to advertise uh, on you. They'd rather go somewhere else. You know, it's just the way it is. Correct. So the ads that would have been on these small startup channels are now going to be filled to larger channels. And again, 10,000 isn't even that small. That's a drop in the bucket. It's just that you flesh out all these beginner channels that could be awful. It could be like fucking ISIS uploading videos. You don't know who's going to be uploading videos. It could be awful content. Or just dead channels that someone started and never did anything with that are somehow still getting ads fed Which, to them. The whole point is that the, it makes the... the Ad sharing, uh, I guess, uh, sh a fresher for everyone. Uh, it keeps it. It keeps the ad ecosystem, I think, going a little bit more pure. And I think advertisers would feel confident that they know that okay, you're not just uh, letting ads put on any because any asshole can create an account on YouTube in five minutes. All you need is an email address, and so it's at least some protection. And I haven't really seen anyone say this is uh, not reasonable. If anything, I saw people say, yeah, it, sh it should be a higher. Put it like I said. Put it thirty, forty, fifty. I, and I don't think people would complain that much. 
But the other big big news is that, and again, this happened within like a week and a half. So Google, they should have been on this track. It, it, it sometimes just takes sort of like a kick in the ass to, to get this stuff going. So Google's a parent company's Alphabet. They changed the name. So they implemented a new algorithm in order to weed out bad content. And it's already, it looks like um, they've flagged five times as many videos as a too offensive for ads in recent weeks versus weeks before. Right. So this is, uh, this is important. Uh, it's a new system that lets outside firms verify ad quality standards on its video service while expanding its definitions of offensive content. Uh, so you want to speak to this? Uh, yeah, so let me pull this. It's an Because there's a whole list. Yeah, it's an artificial intelligence tools that they're now going to be using for the entirety of YouTube with uh, basically a, a learning form of AI that hopefully doesn't take over the world and nuke us because uh, a lot of YouTubers deserve to be nuked. Um, <laughs> so what's interesting is that this existed, like like Alphabet slash Google had this, but they never used it, they never implemented it on for YouTube videos before. So are we talking about the, the sensitive content options that they can choose? I'm talking about the, the AI they're now using, too. Oh, okay. In order to filter out some of this garbage content. All right, the AI was not something that I'm particular... I, it, that was over my head. But looking at the solution, like they were saying, th there was a three-pronged approach to it, and there are options that um, the advertisers can kind of select to t more focused target where their ads are going. So that's on the advertiser side. I was talking about what's on Google side. Oh, okay. To get rid of the bad content. You go with Google side and then I'll go sure. on advertiser so, side. So so like I said it's again it's it's a machine learning technology that they're just implementing now. You know, go out, you know, I can't imagine how many uh, trillions of of gigs of YouTube videos but just start crawling through these videos and and start flagging the bad ones at unmouse and obviously if you get flagged for something that shouldn't be monetized you can then appeal. I had one video uh flagged where it said this is uh, when I talked about the the anti-semitic PewDiePie uh, vi uh jokes. That got flagged saying this is not uh, advertiser friendly. I appealed and within a day it was saying okay this is fine. So they're going to they're going to go through and start doing that probably as stuff is uploaded based upon keywords or SEO uh probably description and things of that nature. Uh, if it can actually gauge the actual content, then that's scary Skynet territory. Where, like, if it actually can tell from the video content if it's offensive or not. I don't want to go there, and I, I don't think that's what this is at this point. Uh, it might be the daytime extra maximum strength mucinex, but that, yeah, that's... That's, that's blowing your mind? That's blowing my mind. <laughs> um... On the advertiser's side, there's a number of ways that they can, uh, direct this as well. Um, there's sensitive content options and sensitive subjects that they can use to uh, weed out display network ads and video ads from targeting certain things such as um, crime police and emergency type videos police blotters, news stories, death and tragedy, military and international conflicts, juvenile gross and bizarre content like jokes, weird pictures videos of stunts I'm assuming that means pranks profanity and rough language and sexually suggestive content um, sensitive subjects like sensitive social issues tragedy and conflict if they don't want to monetize off of that uh, profanity and rough language uh, sexually suggestive content and sensational and shocking um, uh, so it's giving advertisers the tools they didn't have before to at least say okay I, I prefer we don't put our ads for macaroni and cheese in in front of you know uh, a, a a a video about Syrian uh, chemical warfare, right? You know, like that's something we don't want associated with our our Velveeta uh, shells and, and cheese. Yeah, we don't want to, you know, put a an ad involving a loving couple in front of, uh, you know, uh, sexually suggestive content that might be, uh, you know, about sex crimes or something like that. Sure. So. Um, it's allowing a lot more control on the end of the advertisers as well, and I think uh, it's a it's a pretty good start as long as it all works out. This is only good because this gives advertisers confidence to come back and then confidence to spend more money. If they know their money is going more towards where they are directing it to go, they are more likely to pump in more dollars. In the long run, this is a huge win for Google, and that's how it's being analyzed on, on, on financial websites. Yes, they might have had the short-term loss of you know a few weeks of these advertisers pulling out, but in the long run, this is what you needed. This is how it should have evolved. And you can get on 
uh, saying, well, you're going to be censoring out uh, if you don't want, you know, the political, I've seen stuff like, oh, no, the, the, the political talk shows aren't getting ads. I've heard that too from both. I've seen a uh, conservative uh, YouTuber say, I'm not getting ads displayed. I've seen a liberal one. Then other people say, I see the ads, they're back. It could have been temporary. The bottom line is this. If advertisers don't want to spend with you, they don't want to spend with you. Yeah. And you can't force them to. That's just capitalism. But it is, though. Capitalism. If people don't want to uh, put ads in front of the CU podcast because they hate us having beards <clears throat> and looking this devilishly handsome, <laughs> then that's their prerogative. And then, you know, you can be supported elsewhere. Uh, people are... Uh, Patreon is is becoming greater and greater. But I think in the, this is what... is the, This is a natural progression. You Will you see certain genres die out? Thank God, probably yes. Yep. I can't see how, like, if I'm selling cars, I, I'm selling the freaking new Honda Accord, I want that ad in front of a, a fucking prank invasion video, yeah. for example. So if, if some genres die out that are mindless, that got away with getting money from advertisers, where the audience wasn't going to... People watching prank invasion aren't buying fucking Lexuses, you know? So, like, it's just a waste of the advertiser's dollar. So I'm all for this. I don't. I don't really see a negative at this point, unless you try to say that. Well, they're gonna not show ads in front of you know people that w with this political slant or that political slant. Let's get there first, and we can address that if that happens. happens. But in but in terms of uh, websites uh, and blogs that have political slants, they get advertisers. So you can you'll still have advertisers come over to that probably. It may not be the same advertiser, but it might happen, but well, we're not there yet. I mean, Christ, look at fucking cable news networks with political slants. Sure. CNN gets advertisers. Fox News gets advertisers. I mean, what? it, it should be no different for YouTube with, with political slants. What we can get into if we transition to another topic is that business works upon will I make money or not? Is this a smart decision where I'm going to make money? Advertisers will continue... To go to YouTube because that's where the young people are. They grow up. That's their new form of entertainment. That's the new "quote unquote" TV. They're not gonna. They're not gonna stay away from it. This you could have said this was leverage for them to to get a better deal to say, well, your ads aren't worth as much as "quote unquote" a legacy or the mainstream or old school media, you know. But I really think this is. This is they were concerned, and I don't. I don't see that they should not have been. Because if I'm spending two hundred thousand dollars at a clip on advertising and it shows up on shit content that I don't want, that's a huge problem. 